people on GLP-1 medications like semaglutide or zepatide are struggling to eat even a normal amount of food. Accomplishing lasting weight loss depends on your ability to manage hunger and food chatter. You will develop a weaker tolerance and mindset the longer you artificially suppress it with medications like GLP-1, semaglutide or zepatide. Trust me when I say this, I have clinics that surface across the nations. I've helped thousands of patients achieve lasting weight loss with the help of GLP-1s like semaglutide or zepatide. And then we helped them wean off of it and they maintained it with lasting weight loss. I just had a coaching call last week where I had an individual share with us how they were struggling to eat even just a normal amount of food. And she had no idea the ramifications of that, but she was in a weight loss plateau. And I taught her that this was the reason why she was in the plateau is because she wasn't eating enough. And she ended up calling her her prescriber uh, and asking for a lower dose because she's with working with us for the coaching. I totally appreciate how awesome it is to not have food chatter anymore, but the mindset shift needs to start now. The best dose is the lowest dose that is going to help you implement proper lifestyle choices that are going to lead to lasting weight loss. And of course, if you're a diabetic, that's a whole other story, but we're talking about people utilizing some of or Zepatide for weight loss how to do it properly, guys. Let's get into it. Okay. So let's just talk a little bit about hunger and food chatter. Okay. So hunger in a healthy individual are various cues that motivate an individual to consume food, right? And in a healthy individual, you are supposed to have hunger cues that are internally regulated. And so you don't have to think about calories. You don't have to think about anything else. You just eat when you're hungry and you stop eating when you're no longer hungry. It's awesome. And this is one of the main goals that we have with our patients is get them back to stability where they don't have to be so conscious about it, just like we were, all our ancestors were at some point in history. So hunger cues are amazing. But when we look at food chatter, this is the diseased state that we see in the disease obesity, right? And it's, I just want to be clear, it's not, it's not just obesity, right? We're talking about PCOS, menopause, various uh, inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, right? So what we see as a constellation with all these various conditions, we see this one common thread, right? Which is weight maintenance resistance. Like they all have a difficult time losing weight and or being able to maintain it as the hallmark symptom. But the presentation, the reason why is food chatter. So food chatter, this is, it could be sugar cravings, could be this never ending actual physical hunger, this obsession with like, where are we going? Is food going to be there? Is it, how are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? What, what are we going to eat? It's just, it's a very unhealthy obsession or sugar cravings or constant hunger. So whatever it is, we call it food chatter. It's problematic. It's the thing preventing lasting weight loss and GLP-1 medications. They're amazing. I mean, this is a literal slash in that, and it makes it so that this disease state can become more normal it's like the window is open and I can breathe for the first time and I can focus on implementing better lifestyle choices. This is the, this is the ideal, right? This is what people with obesity who've had this issue prior to trying some of glutide or zepatide have been trying to say for years. It's not in my head. I am trying to exercise. I am trying to put down the fork, but I can't, right? And hopefully by now at this point, you've not been living in a rock and you've, you've seen the advancements that we've made in our understanding of obesity that it is not no longer an issue of weak individuals, but it really is a disease state that affects many of us. Okay, so GLP-1 medications, there's, they've been out for 20 years, but there's a big difference between the earlier acting ones and the current ones. So with the current ones, let me make sense of all these names here because there's just a lot to unravel here. So I wanna show you guys this full screen chart here so that you can see we have semaglutide, which is made by Novo Nordisk. And semaglutide was FDA approved as originally Ozempic for diabetes and then Wagovi for obesity. Then we have terzepatide, which is the upgrade. Uh, semaglutide is a single GLP-1 agonist and terzepatide is what we call a dual agonist. It's an upgrade. It works on additional set of receptors, the GIP. And we just notice much better results and prefer terzepatide. So with terzepatide, it was FDA approved as Monjaro and then eventually Zepbound. And this is very recently actually. Uh, and the, ma the manufacturer for terzepatide is Eli Lilly. Okay, so GLP-1 medications have really blown and exploded into the scene because there's just nothing like it. It is a powerful weight loss medication, much safer than any other one we ever had before. And 
actually does other things too as well. It improves insulin sensitivity, right? It reduces insulin resistance, right? So it improves metabolic health. So, I mean, I, I, I can go on and on about these medications, but this concept of needing medications for the rest of your life, this is an interesting one. And this is why I'm such an advocate for helping patients wean off. And I have a really awesome YouTube video you guys should check out. It's all about being able to use these medications and, and wean off and I have clinics out service across the nation helping our patients do this, but, but I really want to just share this sort of this, where, where I come from. And, you know, there's, there's sort of two main reasons. Number one, just the financial implications of these medications long-term, they're, they're very expensive and we are in a national shortage, which is why compounding pharmacists are able to compound this medication. And if you are working with a clinic that deals with a compounding pharmacy, you are getting the active ingredient, some of zepatide. It's not the same thing as Ozempic, Wagovi, Mondero, Zepbound, but it's the active ingredient. This is what we do as well, and we've had no issues. It's significantly cheaper. But what people aren't thinking about is when this national shortage is over. And when this national shortage is over, there is going to be a dramatic increase of price to people because you won't be able to get the significantly cheaper compounded version. And so a lot of people are not thinking about that. You know, and it's so much like focus on the now and I feel good now. And, and unfortunately, no one's plotting and planning for the future. So that's one big issue. And, and, and even insurance coverage, you might be thinking, well, my insurance company is covering it. Yeah, great. They're, they're covering it if, if they are, because I can't tell you how many people are struggling to get insurance coverage, but it's, it's for a medical condition, obesity. Well, if the medication's working, you will no longer be obese. They are not covering maintenance dosing as from what I've seen yet. And the trend, unfortunately, of them opening up coverage for GLP ones for weight loss, it's not, it's not moving in the positive direction. If you guys didn't see South Carolina as of April this year is no longer covering any GLP ones. This was their, their biggest state funded health insurance plan, not the entire state. It's just one health insurance plan. But with the amount of calls we get from people that really do have obesity and insurance companies still not covering it, I, I really see the trend moving in a negative direction. The other aspect is the potential aspect to long-term health. So a lot of people are confused and they think, well, GLP ones have been out for 20 years. We know they're really safe. The earlier acting GLP ones have been around for 20 years, not semaglutide or zepatide. Hasn't even been 10 years on the market that semaglutide has been out and talk to any chemist, any pharmacist, and they'll tell you very well that the smallest molecular change can have the biggest impacts on function. Those earlier acting single day injection medications were significantly weaker than what we have in front of us. We have powerful medications that cause powerful stimulation to receptors, and we have no understanding yet of what chronic stimulation of these receptors can do and will do for our health long term, but you have receptors on your brain, you have receptors on all your organs. And so again, do I think there's going to be problems? I, I, I don't, I don't. I've seen and have been, we've been using these medications, but for quite some time, but we just don't know. And so the safest route, in my opinion, to get the best of both worlds, because I am a fan of utilizing them if you're struggling with weight loss, because we know how bad staying overweight and staying obese is for your health. The, the, the best solution you could take is use them as a tool and not the long-term solution. Use them as a tool so that you can begin and start to implement better choices, but then get aggressive with your protocol so that you can heal the body within and then eventually have less need for them long-term. And that's, again, that's what we actually specialize in. Okay, so what actually leads to weight loss? This is interesting, right? So these studies right here, uh, where they compare different methods of weight loss, you know, calories versus um, you know, optimizing our hormones. And, and the biggest studies literally tell us that it doesn't matter. As long as you're in a caloric death, you will lose weight. This is very confusing, right? Because we have so much, especially now with these medications, appreciation for the disease state that obesity is and how these medications are a powerful tool. So how come this research exists saying that it's just, it's just calories, right? But before we can do that, Let's look at this study here. So this is a, a randomized control human trial where they were looking at successful weight maintainers. And this is interesting, right? So with this study, they identified the, the consistencies, right? In the people that actually maintained weight loss. And, and we gotta be clear here, successful weight maintenance is very elusive. You have to be a freaking unicorn in order to, it's less than 20% of people have ever achieved lasting weight loss. So. It's a very tough group to get into. And the people that did get into this group and did maintain it, you would think they would have saw characteristics that had a lot to do with what they ate and when they ate and how, none of that. It was all mindset stuff, positive mindset, uh, 
um, supportive environment, good cognitive strategy. So things that they could do to get back onto the bandwagon if they fell off the bandwagon, consciousness over calories, uh, consistent exercise program. So a lot of these things were identified to have mindset traits, right? Uh, again, lasting weight loss has never been a successful thing, but for the small group, we see mindset. And so for me, the takeaway is that mindset is a big deal, especially when we talk about hunger and we talk about our relationship with food and we put it all together because why I'm even making this video is the fact that too much appetite suppression is a problem, creates a huge problem. You're never gonna be able to wean off these medications unless you can begin to develop your own tolerance and your own ability to handle being hungry. But you can't in the beginning when you're in this disease state, so we use them and yada, yada, yada. I wanted to interrupt for a quick second and tell you guys about the free weight loss plateau busting guide that you can get. I'll link to it in my description, guys. I break down the exact steps of what you need to solve that dreaded weight loss plateau and more importantly, how to prevent it. Now back to the show. Lasting weight loss includes an increase in your mindset strength. We have to get more powerful mindset in order to be successful with long-term weight loss. I think the, the, the literature we just talked about really clearly shows that. And this is where the problems come in. So GLP-1 medications, it's, it's, it's gangbusters. It's going viral. There's so many clinics popping out right now uh, just trying to make a quick buck. And it's really sad because they don't have intentions of doing anything else. And you know we get these calls every single day. So with a lot of these compounding pharmacies that are popping up in these clinics, working with them, I should say, the clinics popping up, there's uh, very little interaction. I mean, we, I hear this every day that they had one conversation with a clinician or no conversation at all. And literally, that's it. No place, no support, no coaching, no guidance. Even worse, some people are resorting to go to uh, what we call our research companies. Please, please, please don't do that. Um, I, I talk about the dangers of that in this video right over there, uh, Peptides 101. So please stay away from that. Please stay safe. You don't want to find yourself uh, regretting a decision um, because you made a choice that you could have done better for. So, but aside from research companies, we have this situation where people are getting their medications from a clinic and they're not getting the guidance. They're not getting the support that they need for uh, you know, long-term lasting weight loss. And they, they don't know how to navigate around this. So when it comes to these GLP ones, we're utilizing them. If we're not talking about diabetes, they're being utilized for weight loss, right? So if we utilize them for weight loss, then the provider, the practitioner is utilizing that weight loss as their main metric, right? And tolerability of side effects. Ultimately, that's what they're doing is tolerability of side effects. Great. Are you losing weight? Fantastic. We're, we've arrived at the right dose. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that simple. And when the patient hits a point where weight loss has stalled, then they increase the dose. This is a very simplistic and in my opinion, um, incorrect a way to approach dosing a patient. So with the regards to what we're talking about, if the dose is too high beyond that minimum needed for weight loss, then we run, and this happens all too often, that the patient runs into the situation where their appetite is suppressed too much, right? And we've already talked about this, a future with lasting weight loss without being on medications for the rest of your life involves you being able to tolerate hunger, being able to tolerate a normal amount of hunger, a normal amount of food chatter. And if you go months on end on this drug and your appetite is suppressed too much and you're experiencing a very low amount of hunger, you see where I'm going with this? You decrease your ability to tolerate hunger. And when you get off these medications or try to get off of them, now all of a sudden, what should have felt like normal hunger now feels like significantly uh, higher level of hunger, maybe even near the amount of hunger that it was at the beginning, right? Because it's all relative. We have to understand that. That Look, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but again, and I've said this multiple times, there is no future where lasting weight loss is a reality for us if you can't control handling some hunger and handling some food cravings, some sugar cravings, whatever they may be. It's getting your body to the point where it is healthy and it can have normal amounts. And so for us in our programs, this is why we coach our patients strategically. We're doing all the lifestyle interventions like the fasting and the nutritional improvements and the resistance training and the optimizing stress and sleep and all of that. But we also include mindset training 
because of the reasons that we've just finished discussing. So again, if you ask me or my providers, the best dose of GLP-1 medications are the dose that is going to be the lowest dose that allows you to implement the best lifestyle choices, not just any dose that provides us a rate of weight loss that makes us happy. <laughs> it's, it's, and, and it's going to take more medication to trigger weight loss if you're not being aggressive about your lifestyle choices. All right, so what do we do now? What do you do right now if you're stuck and you don't know where to go? I encourage you to have a conversation with your healthcare practitioner and let them know about the dose you're on and the weight that you've been losing and that you are desiring to be more aggressive and you want to implement better lifestyle choices and you feel like it's a struggle to eat or it's, it's a very, very challenging thing, talk to your provider about lowering your dose. You have nothing to lose in this situation and you have everything to gain. What we do with our patients and why we have such a high level of success with being able to accomplish this. First of all, there's just a really a big open gate of communication with, with, with our program. But more importantly, we're implementing the FLOW protocol, F-L-O-A, fasting like our ancestors. This is my strategic and structured approach towards all those pillars that we mentioned earlier that improve metabolic health. They improve insulin resistance, they decrease inflammation, and they improve metabolic flexibility. I find these being common with anybody that's dealing with weight maintenance resistance, which we've talked about as the presentation that we see among obese and uh, individuals who just can't achieve lasting weight loss. So this protocol works. It's very powerful. And if you guys enjoyed watching this presentation, this video, and you got a lot out, a lot out of it, then you're definitely going to want to check out this video here, GLP-1 Realities. It's an interview that I did regarding the many components of our programs and why we have such a high level of success. We'll see you guys later.